when you when you speak whenever you speak of the word use the word i what do you mean by that no i i am going i am coming right okay so what is the meaning of that <coughs> referring to the body i actually is it referring to consciousness okay consciousness can be seen right right the consciousness is silent and cannot be seen but you always refer to body okay or mix up with the mind i am happy i am unhappy like that all right so always refer to the consciousness and that's clear because i never changes 10 years back i now i okay so the i is only a pointer to consciousness but consciousness cannot be pointed it's it's not an object it's not like banana or anything understand consciousness is the subject so i is point and in that consciousness is there one person or somebody is there consciousness is like a sky there's no individual there's not a individual is there ah huh? all pervading also is concept in consciousness all pervading when you say all pervading means a conscious concept is there for you the consciousness is the all pervading concept also depends on consciousness right so consciousness is the underlying reality so you cannot give any name or anything to that any name or anything you give it will mislead okay for example you say sky this is this sky is this space and is this space yes but is this space no because space cannot be pointed by one finger but wherever you point is space space is only so like that the consciousness is beyond any description what you can give because all descriptions come from consciousness are you understand huh? so whenever you speak of i you are referring to something which you don't see okay which is yourself that i is called brahman or god or supreme reality because it's a foundation of everything and it's same for everybody but it's not i it's pointed by i you have to understand the difference between i and pointed by i for example if i say point this is light my finger is not light the finger is pointed to the light like that i is always pointed to consciousness but always there is a confusion about the body okay so vedanta is only removing this confusion right so now you are not the body you are not the mind you are not the intellect now then the question comes is there two things called body mind and intellect and consciousness right is there two things called body mind intellect and consciousness no why so body mind intellect also is consciousness when you say it's not body mind or intellect we are not saying there is nothing i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the intellect we are denying a name and form for consciousness okay it is like water ocean and wave without water there is no ocean there is no wave okay but if i point a finger at to the wave and say this is water that is misleading because the wave is not water 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 has a wave so wave has water but if i point a finger at this thing maitri you don't you suppose you don't know what is water i show point a finger at wave and say this is water it will be confusing because wave is not water wave wave is made up of water but you are not separating out the water from the wave right so it will be confusing any name and form is just a, not a reality in that sense the reality is water correct so now meditation means again and again going back and realizing i am consciousness that's all nothing more okay and everything is consciousness if you everything is conscious you are connected to the whole totality if i am consciousness i am i am i am not a body and mind intellect because body mind intellect come and go consciousness doesn't go i am eternal right this all is understanding okay so it's like wave comes and goes the water the water doesn't change anything the foam is there foam is also water wave is also water the ocean is also water right but water is not a wave water is not a ocean water is not the foam right understand so in that sense i am saying i am not the body i am not the mind i am not i am not separating out the body mind intellect and consciousness 
because everything is consciousness you cannot separate it out so what we are telling is only to ignore the name and form if you ignore the name and form what is there is water if what is there is consciousness ignore are you clear and what is name and form name is this is chair is a name okay right chair has a form and chair has a name right so name and form is called knowledge knowledge is a thought gnana right thought gnana so ignore the thought then what is there is consciousness only so that means if you are ignore if you are able to ignore the thought then you are one with the consciousness or you are consciousness and everything is consciousness that means in deepest silence everything is totally is consciousness correct okay in the vipassana we do it in one way we keep on observing the body and everything is anitya changing so the observer is not changing finally you will reach a observer who is not changing all changing you are observing appearing and disappearing okay so you are established in the unchanging reality that's what is vipassana is about very simple right so other than other than the consciousness pure consciousness everything is constantly changing okay like ocean waves come waves go okay big wave small wave foam is there right and uh, the ocean is there okay so there constantly this is turmoil but there is no change in the water okay so like that anything happen in the world i the real i or pin, something pointed to be real i there is no change that's i am brahman so my suffering in life is because i am taking as a myself as a body and mind not realizing i am myself as brahman or supreme reality so don't more, don't be under the impression that the moment you say brahman or supreme reality you'll get some magical or miraculous powers nothing you feel peaceful rather than peaceful you feel infinite okay there's no limitation to you right so when you do the vipassana okay you are looking at the body which is just drops 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 uh, it's like particles. particles waves and waves now only thing you have to remember is that i am the infinite consciousness looking at the finite body that's all in infinite ocean of consciousness okay we should not have we should not think that i am a body looking at body okay body is an object the consciousness is subject i am the infinite consciousness so body is flickering appearing like a wave appearing and disappearing consciousness so then your understanding will be i am infinite consciousness awareness this is just a wave appearing and disappearing the body temporary all the bodies are also waves huh. uh, all the actually when you observe your body there are other bodies disappear there's no other body right your bo- there are other body and the world appears only when you see through the eyes okay otherwise the moment you see the body the world disappears it's like almost like uh, in a um, 3d movie you are putting a goggle the movie appears now if you observe the goggle movie disappears so there is no more world now the world has merged into your body and if you observe the body it's just a so entire world and your body is appearing and disappearing in consciousness moment to moment so if you stay in this gradually you will be established in the absolute which is not the body which is not the mind which is not the intellect right Is where we keep it close there. Huh. When you open there is an interact with the world. Huh. This feeling may not be there. Again. So now let us see, look at the other way. So this is when you sit. This is going to absolute. Okay. You reject all the name and form and go to the absolute, right? But when you come back to the world, so now first body comes and the world appears. Okay. So the bo- the I principle, which is pure consciousness. which has no name no form and no body there's no body this way it's called nirvana okay it appears as a consciousness in your body so your entire body is animated right 
your body is feeling alive so this aliveness or consciousness is called chidabasa okay so how is that i appearing as a, in you i as i am okay <coughs> the pure i which has no name and form is appearing as i am i mean to give you the analogy of water the water has no form and name the water appears like ocean that's called i am okay so this i am in you this i am in me this i am in you everybody okay it appears as i am and it appears it appears as this right i am and this are they separate i am and this no it is existence right i am and this is not separate so it's only that my body is if able to reflect the consciousness and existence aspect everything right <laughs> this this so i am in sentient beings the consciousness the pure consciousness appears as i am in insentient beings in sentient elements it appears as i uh, no not i this is isness right so i am and isness i am and isness i am there the chair is i am is there fan is there the isness as a appearing right now it's the other way so you go into absolute absolute called parabrahma parabrahma or narayana now you parabrahma narayana manifested as vishnu who is the world so that i am is that ocean okay so you have to know how to how to remain in i am again and again right that's what i told you about sahaja samadhi remaining in i am any thought comes again you go back to i am is it clear so th- when you remain in i am okay so at that i am level this and i am are same both means existence and consciousness right understand so this chair has consciousness huh but existence aspect is reflected here the consciousness aspect ref- to reflect the consciousness the mind is required the mind the mind reflects the consciousness aspect okay a rudimentary mind cannot reflect the consciousness aspect only existence say for example compared to mud the plants have little bit small mind animals have mind human beings have mind the conscious aspect is reflected in all this otherwise easiness or existence aspect is reflected in all of them okay in that sense i am all this right i am the tree i am the mountain i am now not the pure i not the absolute reality it the reality why i am water i am ocean so now water is saying okay water is manifesting in ocean the ocean is saying i am wave i am big wave i am small wave i am foam yeah if it thinks it water it goes to absolute now we are relate interacting with the world while interacting with the world i am everything right so if you don't interact with the world i am nothing right so nothing i am nothing the moment i understand i am nothing so i realize that nothing in the world can affect me right so anything can happen in the world including loss of life okay death doesn't affect me okay because i am absolute consciousness and do you under, do, do you experience absolute consciousness every day deep sleep is that brahman deep sleep there is no mind there is no body there is no intellect you have gone to pure brahman so like that in vipassana only thing is in definition is vipassana and uh, this thing vipassana you do that observe the body observe the body not me not me gradually you come to that deep sleep like state from consciously okay so in effect what you have done you are going into a conscious sleep right understand so that's all so but here we are going uh, awareness now in the in the deep sleep you are going with unawareness right okay so in awareness you sleep it's called samadhi or meditation 
okay so now ignorance is gone what is ignorance so people are afraid of losing their identity i'll die okay people are afraid of even a small cockroach right so those things are gone because you are nothing can happen to you right? nothing can happen to water only something can happen to the wave but wave just moment you dissolve the wave only water is there moment your body is dissolved only consciousness is there <laughs> which is brahman right so your fear will go that's a <coughs> spirituality means the fear goes but then the other side is love is there because when you come back from i when i come back from absolute to relative i am so this i am is everything right i am is the like uh, the ocean is wave water wave and big wave small wave foam so then you say i am tree i am mountain i am i am i am appears as many things ha huh. this is called sarvam kaluida brahma all this is brahman i am appears as everything but only thing is the i am you should not add a qualification so you say the moment you say i am body then you become a finite just say thoughtless stay thoughtless with the feeling that everything is i am okay so now if you go to absolute there is no fear if you come to the relative there is love because you are everything all right whatever you love you have for you will have love for every thing in the universe the mountain that's called love actually really that is love otherwise whatever love you call as love now is not love it's attachment i am the body you are a body we are trying to put together a body okay now the pure love is there where you feel you are connected to everybody you are no longer seeking love when you think you are a body you are seeking love for somebody but now you have become love only love will radiate from you because i am everything again the key is here the name and form has to be rejected means thoughts have to be you should not go after the thoughts yes yourself only is there there's no other the whole world is the self only brahman but it's not individual please understand don't mix don't confuse the individual it's not individual it's not you person it is the consciousness which is everything brahman right so there is no in fact there are no really there's no individuals you tell me in a ocean there are 10000 waves okay is there really wave is there individual wave in that individual wave is only name and form where do you put the boundary between one wave and the other where do you put the boundary between the wave and the ocean okay the wave the boundary as individual is only conceptual now because of this conceptual boundary there is a suffering in life we are fighting we are suffering because we feel separation right we feel one person is separate from the other okay so that separation is there now our purpose in life when we interact with the world we have to drop the separation this causes the stress not only for the myself for all the people around okay so we see only difference instead of that we see the commonality hmm? so this trick of seeing the commonality i'll explain to you okay so the more when you see the commonality there is no hatred it's only oneness okay so if you go to absolute para brahman there's nothingness if you go to the relative there's oneness okay so now how do you see the oneness you have to remain as thoughtless in i amness okay or thoughts you have to reject or you can apply a logic the logic is like this everything in the world okay right everything in the world you can reduce 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 to bring it to i am for example so there are two people indians i am from karnataka another from from tamil nadu if i say i am karnataka tamil nadu it's only a qualification all right 
the moment i say i am indian he is indian now we are coming to oneness what did we extract what did we extracted the common features of the brain right instead of we ignore the sub qualification separation we focused on the commonness indian so now i am indian and he is pakistani we hate each other ha huh? asians or pakistani hate each other so now i am human being he is also human being there is no hatred now there is a commonness right understand okay so next we go i am human being he is human being okay both of us have a commonness called being he looks different i look different he both are human beings the looks are different let us go to the being part when you go to being part this only common being is consciousness which is i am okay the pure i is beyond i am the being is called atma atma is i am okay so at i am level all are one so then there is a oneness so not only living i am okay non living so both of us are being being means existence okay i exist i am i know i am whereas the tree doesn't know tree exists isness is that so at that level all of us are existence isness existenceness okay so at that level all are one okay so now instead of feeling of hatred jealousy we have only love in interaction with the world right but you have to remember that this has come from i amness okay like it's a it, water has appeared as a ocean but i am not not permanent okay so if you really look at i amness it is not permanent it just goes back the water only is permanent so name and form are constantly bubbling and going back bubbling and going back bubbling and going back so the world is appearing when it appears there is oneness when it disappears there is nothingness so because i am nothing i am fearless because i am everything i am full of love all right so now both requires rejection of the specific characteristics the specific characteristics is name and form the finally focus on the commonness commonness in the manifestation right so there is a outward meditation this is inward meditation inward meditation you go to pure i in the outward meditation you bring all of them to commonness and understand that i am the commonness understand so now this outward world is called mithya mithya means unreal okay so in the sense it's a relative reality no absolute reality the wave has a relative reality but wave has no absolute reality the ocean has a relative reality but no absolute reality absolute reality is water water only so if you say finger point a finger at a wave and say this is water nothing wrong in that everything is water only so everything in the world is consciousness but but then you can mistake what is the mistake the wave is water now we start confusing wave is water no the wave has water right so like that everything has to be reduced to basic principle existence consciousness and bliss body is consciousness no, it's like, not has no like wave has water is the same thing after body has. wave wave it's actually wave has no it's not wave has water wave is water okay wave is water but water is not wave mm-hmm. not the other way is true like gold ornament gold necklace earring they have different forms but they are all, all are gold but gold is not a ring gold is not a necklace <laughs> right the other is not true because the moment you say gold is ring then you start thinking oh gold only ring only <laughs> right we start confusing so that's why consciousness appears as everything okay this appearance is unreal it appears and disappears okay when it appears you interact with the consciousness interact with the world as if it's oneness 
Yes, everything is. There's nothing other than consciousness, nothing is there. Okay. But don't call consci consciousness as body, then it will be confusing. Right? Consciousness appears as everything. See, the water appears as wave. Water appears as motion, but water has not become wave. <laughs> Even if the water appears as wave, nothing has happened to the water. Right? The Naharayana Parabrahma, he appears as Vishnu, which is ocean, and Jivas appear, individual, but nothing, no change is in the, happening in the Narayana consciousness. If you point anything, it's actually pointing to Narayana. Okay? But no thing is Narayana. <laughs> Is the logic clear? Yes. So, how, why do you go back to the absolute Narayana again and again? The best method is Vipassana. Okay. So, you are actually becoming free from the relative. Because our mind has become so narrow. I am the body, I am the mind. This is what our program is. Then we start feeling suffocated. And the suffocation goes all around. Everybody will try to hold. Because I am feeling small. I want to hold on to somebody who is Means like a, I want to take support of somebody. Right? Huh? Because you are afraid. I am small. You are not small. You are consciousness. You are Brahman. Absolute reality. So how do you do that? Observe everything. Understand it's changing, changing, changing. And I am unchanging reality. Like it's like water. Water water observing the ocean. Oh, ocean is changing. I am not changing. The wave is changing. I am not changing. I am the pure reality, absolute reality. I am infinite. Infinite also is a word actually. So, the infinity and finity also is a part of the mind. But I am none of this. Are you clear? Okay. So, go to the absolute which is Narayana. Come back to the relative which is Vishnu. I am. But then, or Vishnu, we can say in Vishnu or we can say Shakti. Shiva and Shakti. Shakti is everything. I am has become everything. Okay. Understand? Then the problem is the I am takes the form of a body. I am I am has taken everything. But the I am a thought comes, I am the body, a thought. Okay, everything in the world is thought. Understand? So, like for example, sun is a thought, moon is a thought, right? Everything is thought. Like the body is also a thought. And I am body is also a thought. It's also one object. Understand? So, I am body thought is called ego. I am mind thought is called uh, ego. I am intellect thought is called ego. So, when the moment is the I am body thought is there, I am limited thought also comes. Okay? Now, please understand, these are all thoughts. Okay, none of them are permanent existence. Right? Huh? They will appear and disappear. Like wave comes and goes. Wave comes and goes. Understand? They are not real. They are not permanent. Like water. Water is permanent. So, even if the I am the body comes, nothing has happened to you. That's why whenever you say, refer to yourself, 10 years back I was in this place. Another 5 years I am going here. So, I doesn't change. Which deep inside you know that I doesn't change. <laughs> but when you speak of, you confuse yourself with the body, a thought. Confuse yourself with the thought. Okay? There's only confusion in yourself with the thought. Nothing has happened really. <laughs> the, oh, I am in, I, I was in Bangalore. In your deep inside you know I doesn't change. But immediately, who was there? I was there. Means you're referring to body. Okay, so there's only little bit of confusion, nothing more. It's not complex. This confusion has to be corrected through dana. Okay, so when you said I was in Bombay, who was there in Bombay? The body has changed, the mind has changed, intellect has changed, the unchanging consciousness is there. So consciousness alone was there in Bombay. Consciousness alone is there now also, and consciousness doesn't go and come. <laughs> the body comes and goes. The wave appear and disappear. But appearance and disappearance are always momentary. <laughs> so now, 
there is a confusion that momentary i am the body confuses that okay it's a confusion only deep inside you know always the eye doesn't change right clear now another confusion gets added another confusion is you see something okay for example i had a beautiful experience you say okay you know you say because of you you are you are you are, when you say you are thinking that you are the body but you don't you are you remember, you know that you are conscious all the time but you confuse the body oh i had a wonderful experience you say right okay what do you do such a nice park so now something is recorded in memory okay <laughs> i had a wonderful experience so then another record record is i am i am suffering like anything somebody made you to suffer so good memory and bad memory got recorded so now after 10 years you will recollect what is the recollection now i was so happy now is this memory correct record <laughs> okay the memory has two parts one is information part and psychological part okay the recording of the memory is two parts psychological part and information part information part recording is correct there is a place called bombay or there is place a beautiful place called kashmir i enjoyed okay but the i recording is false what i call as i okay your recording of the i is the body mind complex okay the body mind complex enjoyed the <laughs> which is false yes that body mind complex changed that that body mind complex which has gone to kashmir only was there for that moment it's over now you do second mistake when you recollect i enjoyed so right now current what is body mind complex you are associating with that body mind complex and saying i enjoyed is they make a double mistake <laughs> Huh? <laughs> What is the right sentence? <laughs> There is the information part. I enjoyed. Then, then I en- <coughs> body mind. The previous body mind appeared and disappeared. Over. <laughs> Now new body mind has appeared and disappeared. Okay. Now body mind, body mind. You can think more like a, uh, more like a instrument of the consciousness. Okay. that's one one instrument this is one instrument okay so i mean it's more like more like saying you went to a movie superman or some movie 3d movie one goggle you used now you went to another movie another goggle is used <laughs> the instruments change instrument is constantly changing okay so you are making double mistake i had a good experience which is inf- information and that you associate with body and mind okay now i am suffering oh such a good experience is there i am suffering so you are comparing two experiences experiences are correct but the instruments have changed but you are only looking at the instrument and saying instrument is i am suffering <laughs> so there is no real suffering for anywhere there is no real real uh, permanent happiness also i mean there is no what you call joy or suffering as a permanent entity so you realize that all the time i alone was there okay now is there some individual entity that are called i no brahman only <laughs> you tell me now after sending so many things right so actually right now what you are saying is you put a 3d goggle okay and you watch the 3d movie you are say you are thinking that i am a goggle okay you are saying i am the goggle and i am enjoying in fact goggle is an instrument <laughs> instrument cannot enjoy <laughs> the consciousness doesn't enjoy consciousness is just peaceful silent all the time <laughs> so there is nobody who is experiencing anything <laughs> there is nobody born nobody dies <laughs> what whatever is recorded okay whatever is called as recorded okay all recording has a psychological part and information part information part is required for this body mind complex to go around and do something 
at any moment psychological part is confusing the situation <laughs> okay so you will come you will create start crying story oh you know i am always suffering my whole life has been suffering you will say somebody says oh i am whole life i am successful while consciousness nothing has changed right you create start creating stories people start living the stories understand so what is your story <laughs> it is nothing to the reality <laughs> <laughs> the psychology part of the story has nothing to do with that because psychology part of the story is only pertaining to characters, roles which are coming and going. I mean, apparent is there. <laughs> okay. So, it's almost saying a film actor, a good film actor, he has played in 100 movies. Okay. In 50, in 60 movies, he has played the role of a person who is suffering. And 40 movies, he has played the role of a, a successful man. So, now, you remember all these 40 movies, 60 movies, and say, I am suffering. If he says, there's no meaning in that. <laughs> because their role, momentary roles come and go. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm always happy. That's also false because nothing to do. It's a role <laughs> appearing and disappearing. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening to you people. <laughs> Your body mind is a role which is for a particular role, it's appearing and disappearing. And that role, you make it permanent. Okay. In fact, nothing has happened to me. I am eternally peaceful. That, no change. So that is called Ananda. It's not joy. Right. So that Ananda, which is actually, not, I'm not affected by anything, is Ananda, really. So that manifests as happiness for you. That manifests as momentary happiness. That's momentary, momentary joy. So that Ananda is momentarily coming and going to you. Are you clear? Understood. So you understood how the totality has to be converted, taken, the specific character you have to remove to make it to individual character. Then everything becomes I am and this. I am and isness. I am and isness is Brahman only. <coughs> Finally. So Brahman only, only is reality. Nothing has happened in the world. Nothing is going to happen in the world. Only Brahman alone remains. Is it clear? So now, this doesn't happen unless you practice consciously. Okay? Conscious practice of this is called Samadhi. Vipassana is a way of practicing so that you become absolute. Okay? It's a good way. Right? You go and again and again go back to absolute. So the other way is called Bhakti, devotion. So, this Antar Samadhi and Bhaya Samadhi. Bhaya Samadhi, you have to relate to everything. Okay? I am everything. With that, you will be full of joy and happiness because you feel connected to everybody. Right? So now, this you have to understand that everything in the world is consciousness. Okay? For example, every gold ornament is nothing but gold. Like that, everything in the world has only name and form, but name and form, if you ignore, which is specificity, really you are going back to the consciousness. Consciousness is me. Consciousness is I. I, not me. The me is the body. I, I, I. The pure I. Pure. It's not even I. There's nobody who says I there. <laughs> I is an expression of consciousness. Understand? I is an expression of consciousness, signature of consciousness. But there is consciousness itself, there's no I. You don't understand the difference between expression and one who is expressing. Right now I am expressing my words. But the ex person who is expressing is not words. Right? So, in reality, there is no individual in the world. It's only consciousness. Right? So, now this actually, in meditation, we don't have to reject thoughts. Thoughts are nothing but name and form. Giving characteristics. You don't have to reject it. You have to understand only it's mithya. Mithya means it's a temporary appearance. That's all. It is not, uh, doesn't mean unreal. It is appearing and disappearing. Okay. Right. It is not real in the absolute sense. It will not be there all the time. All the time, I only is there. So, it is appearing at this moment and disappearing into me, into the I. Okay. So, the way of understanding is everything is Mithya. So, I will have a logic. Okay. See, there is a pot. And pot and there is a plate. 
and there is a cup. All are made up of mud. True? So, is there a, something called pot? Is there something called plate? Or is there something called cup? Actually, it's a name and form is there. Okay. There is no, nothing called, it's actually mud. <laughs> right? You have given a name and form. Name and form has a utility. No doubt. In the pot, you can drink, store water. In a plate, you can eat. There's a usefulness is there. It's a transaction use is there. Okay. So now, this transactional purpose, there's a plate and water. Uh, mud. But really the mud is there. Now practically the mud is mud cannot be used. Mud is not useless. Mud is useless really. <laughs> mud cannot store water. Mud you cannot eat. <laughs> but if you start looking at mud uh, plate, cup and uh, pot they are mud only. <laughs> right? But mud itself has no use. Like that Parabrahman, Narayana is completely relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> the moment he gives a form, some functioning will happen. Okay? And the form is not real. It just appears and disappears. Right? So now, somebody who goes and purchases that mud pot, right? he pays the money. Is he paying for money for mud? He is not paying money for mud. He wants only pot which stores water. He is paying money for the utility. Uh, functionality. Right? <laughs> he is paying money for the functionality. He is not paying money for the mud. Mud, mud is useless to him. <laughs> you understand? So similarly, this Adhyatma, okay, we should not confuse the physical, I mean, uh, our day-to-day -day transaction. In day-to-day -day transaction, no, no, I am not a body, I am not a pure conscious, it's useless to the world. <laughs> In the transactional world, they are only seeing what is function you can do. <laughs> and you cannot confuse them, because they can't understand. A person who is buying a mud pot, he will never think it's mud, he will only think it's a pot. You cannot understand, no, it's mud only. No, no, why should I pay money for mud? <laughs> Right? So, the, the world is Mithya means Nama Rupa. Brahman is Satya. But in your day-to-day -day transaction, don't confuse. Okay? So, Sri Rama is going, he is going for exam. So, all exam is Mithya. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it's a transaction. There, you have to play the role. You have to write the exam perfectly. Right? The moment you say this world, the, uh, this exam is Bithya, you will also become useless. <laughs> so you should not mix up these two. Okay? Interact in the world, you interact with the understanding it's Mithya, but it's oneness. Okay? When you come back from the world, you understand it's not real. I am absolute reality. Nothing happens to me in spite of my body-mind complex dying. Right? So you have to develop pure wisdom, pure dnana. I am free from everything. And you have to develop pure love <laughs> when interacting. Right? You understand? Now our problem is not we don't have pure dnana, we don't have pure love. <laughs> we have a dnana. I am is there and I doesn't join. But there will always be associated with the body, which is adnana. <laughs> okay? Right? So now we have love. Okay? I love my son because he is my son. <laughs> so, the, both are corrupted. The love is corrupted by minus and, okay, the I-ness is corrupted by body, body. So, this corruption has to go, this truth nana. And again and again, we have to think of this and come back. Okay. Now, where is this Ishwara? The Ishwara is the totality. Okay. Totality is also consciousness. So then you cannot come back and say there is no Ishwara. Ishwara is God. The entire world is running with the order. So you can't say Ishwara is not there. When you are in the relative, you are do your, do your job properly. You have to do function properly. Understanding everything is oneness. Ishwara. Okay. At the same time, you have to give respect to the Ishwara or Bhagwan. 
because you are in the domain of the relative. That's where we do puja, Shiva, Shakti, Narayana. You cannot violate that because it's a transaction. In that transaction, the entire universe is participating. So, no, no, I am consciousness, God is consciousness, we are all one. It doesn't work. When you are in the transaction. When you go to the absolute, the God, I and the world disappears into absolute. Clear? So you cannot stay in absolute. The moment you stay in the absolute, okay, you are become non-functional. Right? You can't function. The moment you come to the relative, you are become functional. There are two different worlds, the two different domains. You should not mix up the domains. When in this domain, you should work perfectly in this domain. When you go to that domain, you should be in there. But out of this, the absolute domain, it's called Paramarthika, is the eternal reality. Whereas temporal reality keeps changing. Understand? So you should not mix. Sir. No, 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 this is all Maya. I am not doing anything. I am not the doer. <laughs> all those things, no. In this Maya, you have to work properly. Okay? In the absolute, you should not work. But you should know both. Alright? And you should not mix up both. The moment you mix up both, you will confuse yourself because you can't do any functioning and you will confuse others also. So, it's almost like Mithya and Satya to tell me, example of Mithya and Satya. A scientist knows a cup of coffee is nothing but water. Water is nothing but atoms or molecules. It is nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> okay? So, Satya of water is what? Hydrogen and oxygen. So, will you drink a cup of glass of hydrogen or will you drink a cup of water? <laughs> so, if he mixes up Mithya and Satya, instead of water, he should drink hydrogen. <laughs> Understand? If he drinks water hydrogen, he will die. <laughs> right? So, you should not mix up Mithya and Satya. While treating water, it's water only. But you should understand the reality. Okay? The reality is called Tattvadnana. And relative reality is called transactional reality, called Vyavarika Dnana. You should not mix. Even though you, by Dnana, what happens? You develop the pure awareness, love and peace. That's all. Right? So, now scientist says, okay, this is also hydrogen and oxygen. Now, Instead of doing a cup of coffee, let me drink a poison. Anyway, there is a poison also hydrogen and oxygen in there. <laughs> Will you do like that? So, the Atma Dnara or the Nana, this thing, doesn't lead to confusion. Okay? He said that domain is this domain. This domain is this domain. So, we go to Paramarthic domain, absolute reality, to get the peace and love. To become more peaceful and loving. Okay? Transactional domain for performing whatever the body mind is designed for. Okay? So that function you do well. That's all. Like that, Atma Dhani, he does, he is in the world, but he is not made up of the world. Okay? Understand? Like a lotus is in water, lotus is in mud, born in mud, growing in water, and opening to sunlight. Sunlight is the wisdom. That's why lotus is a symbol, a symbol of enlightenment. Atma Dhani is born in mud, which means thinking that ignorance, I am the body, I am the mind, intellect. But he grows up in water called samsara, but he is not touched by that. And he always blossoms Dnana, always Dnana is there. Clear? So now, if you want to go back to pause.